if you're in town for Melbourne and perhaps you've come from away for the Australian Open tennis, you've actually got a decent chance of seeing some sport in person. Up to 30,000 fans each day will be allowed in who will now form Avenue Qs to see the games, split 50-50 between matches starting early and those during the hard day's night. The Wizards in Oz, using that term gender neutrally, include Martin Pakula, Minister of Sport, and so effectively one of the producers of the Australian Open, who said it will be the most significant international event with crowds that the world has seen in many, many months. Now that will be the sound of music to the ears of sports fans for whom this has so long been a forbidden planet as far as going to events is concerned. Sadly, of course, Roger Federer, once the sport's greatest showman, won't be there. He's uh, not very footloose. In fact, it's been nearly a year that his knee has been basically frozen. Also absent is Andy Murray, who tested positive for coronavirus over last weekend, possibly after noticing he had a spot of Saturday night fever. As a result, everyone's talking about Jamie, his blood brother, also less miserable, sorry, is Serena Williams, who has praised the quarantining procedures. She like most of the guys and dolls there, went straight from the luggage carousel to be locked up in the heights of her high society hotel in Adelaide with her three-year-old daughter Olympia for company. Venus, her sister actually, is playing today in the Melbourne 2 tournament. Serena is still searching for the elusive record tying 24th slam after becoming a Mamma Mia. If not here, then her chance would be at Roland Garros, where, of course, she'll be an American in Paris. If not, then how long will sorry, she that was continue very good. That to was very good. miss? <laughs> Saigon, now Ho Chi Minh City, flying across from the South Pacific, was not selected to host the first Vietnamese Grand Prix. Hanoi was, but that was cancelled due to COVID last year. And a report in Motorsport magazine now suggests it might not happen any time from here to eternity. That's owing to the arrest and imprisonment of the chairman of Hanoi, Nguyen Duc Chung, who was the man who paid the rent and was there to grease the wheels of the Grand Prix. As a result of Chung being wicked, Vietnamese fans will no longer form a chorus line to see Hamilton on the city's streets, crossroads and indeed Sunset Boulevards and watch his chic car go. I'll add in this story about Newcastle United, who say they will take appropriate action against Joseph Linton after he was pictured having his hair cut, and presumably hair sprayed, by a barber, though not one of Fleet Street. He may have felt that his mane needed taming, otherwise he'd have looked like the Lion King, but perhaps he could have just put a top hat on it. Newcastle say they are disappointed as obviously at the moment all the barbers in the country are of course closed, so if Joe Linton was having it dyed then he would be illegally blonde. Also, Colin Montgomery, sometimes mocked as Mrs Doubtfire, has been talking to the BBC this week, speaking frankly about his career and the times he came close to winning majors but missed crucial putts and had to say bye-bye birdie. If you're an absolute beginner, you're perhaps unaware of Colin's fame and you haven't a clue what I'm talking about, you can find the whole thing on the BBC Sport website if you want the full Monty. Returning to the beautiful game, Peterborough United get a mention here because they're away from London Road at Shrewsbury, whereas in the same division, Sunderland's Black Cats play against Gillingham. And uh, that's it for the sport. Sadly, no time for a story about chess. I mean, how many? How many musicals? 